<laughs> so what's happening now? Okay. Um, I'm from Greece, but living in Germany. Um, I'm working for a German-based company. It's called Enruns, and I'm doing the uh, penetration testing, also source code, uh, source code reviews, and also giving um, developer trainings. And prior joining Enruns, I was a software developer uh, for seven years. So that's about me. Before we start, um, I assume that you're confident with cross-head scripting, what it is, the impact, etc., and what you can do. And furthermore, I, I expect what a filter should do in the best case. Um, the talk is not about how to write a secure filter, and also I will not present you new groundbreaking uh, cross-site scripting bypasses. So if you think you want to leave, maybe you have a coffee or a nice cake or visit another track, just to be fair. Okay, so the talk is more about um, to understand what kind of filter mechanism exists and furthermore, you consider this talk more as an, uh, as an overview for you as penetration tester, for you as a software tester, for you as a software architect who have to design um, a secure application, but also for vendors um, who um, yeah, are giving or um, having appliances to protect against cross-site scripting and other vulnerabilities. So this is more like a keep and track of information. Um, acknowledgement is very important. Um, first of all, as makes great cross-site scripting a cheat sheet. And also, everybody who posts it at the slackers.org um, forum, um, there are many great ideas there, and um, many bypasses were discussed um, at this forum at the first place. So um, if you um, want to be well, stay tuned on everything. Um, I recommend to um, visit the site regularly. Okay, so first of all, um, this is my agenda, and the introduction is quite easy. Um, why we need cross site scripting filters? Um, because of the social networking thing, or I'm calling it express yourself methodology. So everybody wants to express himself uh, with nice pictures, uh, with a lot of other interesting videos or other uh, media files. And um, at the end, um, if you um, start a company, you want to be successful in the Web 2.0 century, and you need a lot of visitors to make money. So you must offer uh, your visitors um, this functionality to express themselves. So this means at the end that um, you have a problem in a security way. So the problem is quite easy if you're thinking about security and uh, what you should do in the best case. Uh, this is first of all a very strict input and output validation. Input validation um, means priority, um, you have a whitelist um, which is very strict and also if you're doing output validation it means you um, encode your data properly. But again, um, if you do it like that, no visitors, no money, no business. So the reality is completely different. So we have the theory and we have the practice, right? And we know there are two pairs of shoes. So the reality is that the whitelist approach does not match at all because um, yeah, the user data is not predictable in any case. And if you allow you, um, the users to put flash files, an example that the previous talk was about flash um, uh, parameter injection was very good, by the way. And um, if you follow this, this track, then you know um, that how easy it is also to break a very good cross site scripting filter through um, yeah, a vulnerable flash file. So on the other side, encoding output does not work at all because um, the data of the user must be renderable. So if I want a pink background color, so um, I 
should um, allow this and also if I want that a user want to embed other images, uh, uh, this is something that I also have to allow. So the mitigation, um, the software architect. So it comes up um, because there's some yeah, functional specification uh, from the manager and then comes up to the to the software architect and tells them, okay, this is what we need, um, what you can do right now. So, and uh, the software architect will say, okay, um, dear manager, there's no problem, we are using a framework and this framework has for us a lot of security features built in, like an example, the .NET framework. So, we are having kind of request valid validation security mechanism which should prevent us against cross-site scripting. And um, yeah, the reason is because uh, some special characters are not allowed there. So the left angle bracket and the um, right angle bracket in this case. So, and whenever um, the, f the framework sees these characters, then um, immediately um, an HTTP request validation exception occurs. So we are safe against cross-site scripting, and you know what? We are using also SP.NET web controls, and um, they automatically encode output by definition. And uh, yeah, and furthermore, we are using also white loss approach because we know this is very good at all. So this is a software architect. Now we are coming to the developer view. What happens? Yeah, we suffer from depression, right? Um, so we are starting now um, to, to convince um, the software architect this is also a completely bad idea. Com the general security features of the framework does not work, the whitelisting does not work at all um, because um, if we should allow user-generated content in our website, so we need to allow the left and the right um, bracket, right? So this does not work at all. So in the next point, what you should do, or mostly the developers are doing, um, they're starting to count which security vulnerabilities the framework had in the past. Um, so if we are thinking about the .NET framework, there was some really uh, nice uh, exploits around. Um, there was a bypass if you have a the vacation um, uh, site there, and also there exists a um, very good uh, white paper um, from a UK-based um, company which um, um, tells you how to bypass this mechanism completely. So at what happens next, we should find a compromise. So, and the compromise is usually, usually to define a blacklist because um, this does not affect in any way the functionality of an application if you build it already. So, how we should filter now? Um, there are some three approaches right now that um, I saw it in different kind of uh, source code by customers.